earlier I have mentioned about cleanocranial or cleidocranial dysplasia, delay in ossification centers, clavicular absence or dysplasia, sometimes only part. Now earlier I have mentioned about cleanocranial or cleidocranial dysplasia, delay in ossification centers, clavicular absence or dysplasia, sometimes only partial absence is there, open fontanelle, vermilion bones are common, midline defects, poor ossification of the pubic bones, as a result of midline defects. Dysplastic clavicles, not completely absent but partial absence of the clavicles. And then pelvis, defective ossification, underdevelopment of pubic rami, look at the arrow, and ischial hypoplasia, iliac wings are laid up. Fontanel, anterior fontanel is white. Again, pubic symphysis abnormalities, defective mineralization, vermilion bones, both in the lateral as well as in the occipital views. Now we come to peripheral dysostosis, only peripheral bones, only bones of hands and feet are involved, not the other skeleton, not axial skeleton or cranium. Short, stubby, metacarpal phalanges, look at the thumb, short, it's a distal phalanx also is involved. In the foot, lens, short hands and feet. What are the other entities? You get an echondroplasia, but look at the other bones. Polyers, look at the other bones. Mucopolysaccharidosis like Hurler, Hunter, and Markio. They can involve hands and feet, but other bones also. Hypochondroplasia, and of course, here, peripheral dysostosis. Only hands and feet. Again, another example of peripheral dysostosis. Fibrous dysplasia, another entity, most common of all these osseous dysplasias, fibrous dysplasia of the bone is rather common. Could be monostotic or polyostotic. And when it is polyostotic, it is what is called a Albright syndrome, predominantly unilateral. It can occur bilaterally, but predominantly unilateral with sexual precocity and endocrinal and skin changes. That is why Albright has described this as a specific entity. Radiological findings, lytic area with the rind and smoky matrix, occasionally calcific matrix, then they call it fibrochondrodysplasia. In cortex, when it is aggressive, we are talking about monostotic or multiostotic also can have these findings. Mixed osteolysis and sclerosis, fractures, pathological fractures, pseudoarthrosis, not healing properly, deformed limbs and modeling deformed. Cranium, skull changes predominantly base of the skull and facial bones, fibrous dysplasia. And then sinuses are also involved and look at the mandible, fibrous dysplasia, cherubism, fibrous dysostosis they call it, but cherubism only confined to the mandible, should not be mistaken for calfis disease, because in calfis disease also you can get hyperostosis in mandible and other bones like uh, ulna, ribs, etc. Again to show fibrous dysplasia, simulating sinus, parasinal sinus disease. Look at the right maxillary sinus. No aeration, completely displaced, enlarged sinus. Again ribs, not be mistaken for a tumor, expansion, the ground glass appearance, cortex is intact. Elongated fibrous dysplastic lesion, not to be mistaken for a aneurysmal or other bone cyst. Again, another example on the right ribs, expanded ribs. Femora, proximal ends of the femora, neck, quite common. Sometimes it is called a shepherd's crook type of deformity. Multicystic with a fracture. Here also multicystic, but ground glass appearance, where there is no ground glass appearance there in the matrix. Again, pathological fracture, chondro, right type of calcifications are noted with marked osteoporosis and pathological fracture. Disorder sacrum. You can't get in any other entity such type of occasionally neurofibromatosis, deformity of the bones may simulate this, but it is fibrous dysplasia. Again, localized in the iliac bone multi 
calcifications. Sometimes if it is only one, we may call it fibromyxoma, but it is fibrous dysplasia. Look at the thick rind. Again, bilateral involving both femora and a Shepard's Cook type of deformity. And tibia. Look at the multilocular appearance. It is an adult, it may be mistaken for an adamantinoma, but there is no parasitic lesion. In a child, say 5 years, 10 years, or child below 10 years, you may think of a ossifying fibroma, which may look like this also. And look at the deformity of the radius and mild deformity of the ulna. Entire shaft of the radius is involved. Hands, different type of deformity with a groundless appearance expansion, sometimes a small calcification should not be mistaken for multiple enchondromatosis. Look at the entire bone, for example, second one is bigger, brighter, but then it should not be mistaken for Paget disease. These are the different blackness deformities. Now we come to another uh, entity called osteogenesis imperfecta congenita. And then there are four types or four degrees or four stages or four types. Osteopenia is common. Multiple fractures are common. Poorly mineralized skull, vermin bones here also get multiple vermin bones. Ribbon like ribs, thin. A spectrum of osteogenesis imperfecta, cystic type of lesions, fractures, pseudo fractures, deformities of the long tubular bones. Again, Callus, pseudo callus formation, multiple fractures. It should be diagnosed both by ultrasound, even in the fetus. Intrauterine ultrasound examination is demanded. Again, when it ossifies, a bizarre appearance of callus formation, cystic type of appearance in the ribs. Again, just to show, almost simulating a pseudo tumor of hemophilia expansion, lytic changes, association in perfect retard in an adult is an infant. Again, just I am showing you this various spectrum of osteogenesis imperfect. It is not just fragile bones, deformity of the bones, fractures of the bones, pseudo callus of the bones. Look at the ribbon like bending of the fibula, osteogenesis imperfect. Now we come to another entity called Conradi Hunerman, difficult to pronounce Hunerman disease, condo dysplasia punctata. Stippled calcifications of bones, calcifying occasions adjacent to vertebrae, vertebral deformities as a result of this, asymmetric shortening of long bones, may have cataracts and mental deficiency also. Not all of them do have, but some of them do present with that. Classical case. Look at the punctate type of ossification centers, several type of tarsal centers it looks, one on the foot, mild tarsal centers, tar centers, some specific calcification. Then we come to another entity called multiple epiphyseal dysplasia, ossification centers of hips, knees and ankles are involved, multiple foci of calcifications, delayed appearance of epiphyseal centers small snorts in the spine, premature degenerative changes and sure changes also in the apophysis of the spine. Although there are apophysis, they are also involved in this. Classical example of multiple epiphyseal dysplasia, namely the small epiphyseal centers broadened and flattened epiphyseal centers of the radii. Almost dysgenesis of the medial part of the other lateral part of the epiphyseal cartilage for the tibia. Look at the complete formation of the medial end, absence of the calcification or ossification and the lateral end of the epiphysis. Lateral, this is of course after uh, epiphysis are fused, namely say in 30 years or 40 years, those are the deformities due to premature fusion of the epiphysis and as a result of premature fusion, you get depressions of the tibia and hypertrophy of the femoral carnals as though to compensate for the depressed or dysgenesis tibial epiphysis. 
then there is a, not only epiphyseal dysplasia, in the epiphyseal, multiple epiphyseal dysplasia, the spine is not involved. Whereas here, in spondyloepiphyseal dysplasia, again congenital form, the spine also is involved, ovoid type of vertebra, dorsal wedging, dislocation of C1 and C2, because the odontoid floss also in the form of vertebral body, ossification, retarded ossification of the epiphysis, rhizomelic shortening of long bones, such as you see in achondroplasia, retarded carpal and dorsal centers. Look at the OI type of vertebra or the vertebral bodies. In AP view, you see only flattening of the vertebral bodies, rectangular shape. Sometimes the same thing, spondyloepiphyseal dysplasia may present with polyarthropathy, particularly hands and feet. It simulates uh, rheumatoid arthritis, but no erosions as in, you see in rheumatoid arthritis. Large metacarpal heads as though due to hyperemia soft tissue swellings. Look at the pelvis, look at the femoral heads. They are large, irregular and resulting in premature degenerative changes of the both the hips. Hands, adult, arthropathy, that metacarpal heads are big, maybe some para-articular osteoporosis. Clinically there is bilateral diffuse swelling at the joints, simulating again adult rheumatoid arthritis. In a child, simulating juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, marked osteoporosis, particularly para-articular osteoporosis. Epiphysis are bigger due to hyperemia, simulating rheumatoid arthritis, but there are no erosions or eventually they do not end up with ankylosis, just such as you see in rheumatoid arthritis. Then we come to metaphyseal chondrodysplasia or it is also called metaphyseal dysostosis. Common type, several, Schmidt type, Jensen type, the Cusick, other also otherwise called cartilage hair dysplasia, metaphyseal chondrodysplasia with uh, pancreatic insufficiency and neutropenia called Schwachmann syndrome and an uncommon 10 types. I don't have to go into details. As opposed to epiphysis, epiphysis secondarily may be involved, but primarily metaphyseal dysplasia, not the metaphyseal irregularity. Again, metaphyseal irregularity such as you see in healing type of rickets, but there are no rachitic changes. Spondylometaphyseal dysplasia, Schmidt type, metaphysis are irregular, layered and splayed as you see in rickets, shortening of tubular bones, spine is also involved. Another Kozlowski type, this guy Kozlowski is a Polish uh, radiologist, he has described several types of dysplasias, that is his hobby, skeletal dysplasias. And then this particular type, that is spondyly, sail type of vertebrae, particularly D12 and L1, not to be mistaken for cretinism, horizontal acetabulae, short femoral necks, irregular metaphysis, retarded bone age, autosomal dominant this feature, manifests later. By Arabs and Muslims predominate. It looks like rickets, either healing rickets, but this is metaphysical dysplasia, no rachitic changes. Radiologically, marked plate is spondyly, rectangular type of vertebrae, anterior beaking, broad and short ilia, plate strapular roof, metaphysical irregularities whereas epiphysis are normal. Of course, apophysis are irregular, simulating Schurman's. Janssen's type, there is osteopenia and fractures, widened metaphysis. This resembles rickets, that is why it is called pseudo rickets. Calvarial hyperostosis is also noted. Spondylometaphysial dysplasia, peripheral arthropathy, retarded carpal and tarsal bones, large articular ends of bones, degenerative changes, Metaphysical changes. Here looks like slipped epiphysis, but it is due to metaphysical dysplasia. So, secondary changes in the acetabulum. Now we come to most confusing, I, I should say confusing, if you go into the details of the subject, it is clear cut, but for a general radiologist, confusing. Mucopolysaccharidosis, baby shreya, 
three years uh, male and uh, look at the clinical appearance, the head and the bowed legs, etc. Group of closely related but distinct disorders characterized by dwarfism. Common factor is dwarfism. Deposition of certain mucopolysaccharides in body tissues. Presence of certain mucopolysaccharides in urine. So, you require urine examination to differentiate from one mucopolysaccharidosis to another. Types, nine types have described. Maybe in another year, another type will be described. That's for you as the young students. Marcus, Hunter and Haller are the prominent. If you remember these three, San Filipino, etc., you may study in detail in textbooks. Radiology, skull, large dolichocephalic skull, premature closure of sagittal suture, poorly developed paranasal sinuses and mastoid, spine, vertebral bodies, inferior beaking, defective development of anterior portion, so this, and gibbous deformities. This is Hurler's. And pelvis again, underdevelopment of superior stabular angle, hands, osteopenia, cortical thinning, carpal bones are small and deformed, tapering of distal ends of radius, look at that, and bullet shaped metacarpals. So, if you know certain disease is a, belongs to a mucopolysaccharide disorder, this do mean there is a lot of overlap. Studying in the entire skeleton, unless you study the urine and tissues for distinct mucopolysaccharide you cannot really categorize Oh, this is Hurler, this is Hunter, maybe predominantly Hurler, predominantly Hunter or Marcus, but unless you study the enzymes, you cannot categorize. Certain radiological features are common for both. Some of them are predominant, some of them are mild.